The technical details finally emerge. The Falcon content update for window host the day that crowdstrike destroyed the universe let's find out about it what happened on july 19th 2024 at 409 utc as a part of ongoing operations crowdstrike released a sensor configuration update to windows system sensor configuration updates are an ongoing part of protection mechanisms of the falcon platform this configuration update triggered a logic error resulting in a system crash and blue screen b sod of death you notice that they 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 they, they did not put the word of death you know for a fact this statement was carefully curated. You know for a fact how careful they were on this, and they intentionally avoided the of death part uh, on impacted systems, on impacted systems. Yeah. The sensor configuration update uh, that caused the system crash was remediated on Friday, July 19th, right afterwards. So again, they're making it sound like it almost was no time between remediation and, and root cause. But what they're leaving out is that it took people forever to go. To, like, fix the issue. All right, this issue is not a result uh, of or related to cyber attack. Customers running Falcon Sensor for Windows version 7.11 and above that were online between Friday, July 19th, 2024, 409 UTC, and Friday, July 19th, 40, uh, 2024, 527 UTC may, may be impacted. Systems running Falcon Sensor for Windows 7.11 and above that downloaded the update configuration file from those time zones were sus uh, susceptible to a system crash. To a system crash. Man, they are underselling this like I've never seen something undersold in my entire lifetime. You may be impacted. You were susceptible to a system crash. It's just a blue screen, not of death. Technical details. On Windows systems, channel files reside in the following directories. All right. Uh, and have a file name that starts with the C dash. Each channel file is assigned a number as a unique identifier. The impacted channel file in this event was 291. And the file name that starts with this right here ends with .sys extension. Although channel files uh, end with a .sys extension, they are not kernel drivers. Channel file 291 controls how Falcon evaluates named pipe executions on Windows systems. Named pipe pipes are used for normal interprocesses, uh, interprocesses or inter-system communications in Windows. The update that occurred at this time was designated to target newly observed malicious named pipes being used by common C2 frameworks in cyber attacks, such as the all zero one, right? The configuration update triggered a logic error that resulted in an operating system crash. CrowdStrike has corrected the logic error by updating the content in channel file 291. No additional changes to channel file 291 beyond the updated logic will be deployed. Falcon is still evaluating and protecting against the abuse of named pipes. This is not related to null byte bytes contained within channel file 291 or any other channel file. Interesting. Interesting because everyone on Twitter was saying it was a it was it was reading a null effectively you're trying to dereference a null a null pointer. That's what everybody was saying, and they're directly saying, no, it's not that. Remediation. The most up-to-date remediation recommendations and information can be found on our blog and support portal. We understand that uh, some customers may have specific support needs as we ask them to contact us directly. Systems that are not currently impacted will continue to operate as expected, continue to provide protection, and have no risk of experiencing this event in the future. Really? I want you to think about that again. There one, no, that's not a bold statement. It's a very obvious statement. Think here for a second. What are they saying? You have no risk of experiencing this event. Channel file 291 is not going to fuck you. Some other thing may happen, but this specific file is not going to get you. Channel file yeah, 297, on the other hand, is a different story. Somehow this is worse, in my opinion, than them coming out and just saying, you know what? Here's what happened. Here's how it happened. And this is where we are actually fixing these things. We are so done with 291. We are so done with 291. It's shocking that they're not even giving us the reason why and how they're planning on fixing it. Like, I have absolutely no confidence that this won't happen again in a different way. Uh, maybe we are just overthinking their statement. No, we're not overthinking their statement. They just crashed like half the world. We're just looking at... Like, imagine you did this, and then this is your response, right? Your response was, oh, this, there's no risk of this event in the future of hurting you. It's just like, yeah, duh. This is a ukulele. Like, get the ukulele out. We understand how this issue occurred, and we are going, uh, and we are doing a thorough root cause analysis to determine how this logic flaw occurred. The effort will be ongoing. We are committed to identifying any foundational or workload improvements we can make to strengthen our process. We will update our findings in the root cause analysis as this investigation progresses. 
Well, I guess we're going to do this again. Here we go. Yet again, we're going to take apart their words and what they're actually saying. Notice what they're actually saying. They're going to do a thorough root cause analysis for how this logic flaw occurred. Where's the part where they do a root cause analysis for how this bug ever got out to all computers in the universe? Like, again, this entire, like, every single statement contains this, like, exceptional nonsense to it that is just completely avoiding the real problem. CrowdStrike is what happens when your technical team is actually just the sales team again. This is just, you know what, CrowdStrike, Cloudflare, they're both, they're both doing it. This is just, this is, this is a masterclass in legal deflection because this was most certainly not just a, I mean, obviously there was a, there was a, there was a logic flaw. Like we can all agree to that. Duh, we get it. Um, but there was most certainly a business flaw here. I would, there's no way you can convince me that every single, that they had some giant fleet of computers they tested on and everything was nice and fine. Why is there a channel file 291? Where is the code, you smelly nerds? Um, the only charitable read to all this situation is that they simply bypass, I mean, they bypass testing. That, which is a crazy statement to make. Imagine saying the most charitable read is that you acted completely negligent and bypassed all the testing. Because any other way you could possibly read it is that you are completely inept in your testing process, which is actually worse. Or B, you have no testing process, which seems insane. Right? Like, there's like the most charitable read is that you have a bad business. <laughs> yeah, when they say this, well, again, they, this will never happen again. They've already blue screened to people a lot. Yes, there's a whole bunch of them. There's actually quite a few. For those that don't know, uh, Cloud, uh, Cloud or CrowdStrike has done quite a few different one of these. Uh, we actually read through a whole bunch of them yesterday, and they'll be on they'll be on uh, the the primetime channel here shortly. Um, but there's actually quite a few of these that they have gone through and done. And so that's why they were very specific in their statement. That's why, again, that's why I highlighted it. They didn't say that they're going to uh, this like blue screens of death will not happen again. There's no risk of this specific event happening again. They will not have this specific logic flaw relating to channel file 291 happening again. Prime recommending unit testing ain't no way. Not even unit testing. System testing, production testing, all the testing, slow rollouts. I know people always say CrowdStrike CEO was CTO at McAfee, and McAfee had some big issue as well. I somehow doubt that that's the real problem. I'm not sure if he is single-handedly the problem, because there's a whole cascading uh, thing. Because you got to remember that any of these companies, these larger companies, how much do you want to bet there's going to be a C-suite here, right? There's going to be a C-suite. And then there's going to be a whole bunch of VPs under all these little micro orgs. Each under each one of them is going to be somewhere between two to three probably directors. And each under each one of those is going to probably be somewhere between one to two to three managers, right? And then under them is going to be the actual engineering, right? This is probably what's going to happen. And so it's like, do I think the single CEO is the problem? No. Now, the CEO may contribute to the problem. He may most certainly be a part of this problem. But there's an entire like org chart that is perpetuating potentially bad leadership from the top. It's not only the CEO faults. It is also the VP fault. It is also the director. It's also the managers. It's also the engineers. The engineers should have been the engineers should have been like, F no, we're not doing this. Like you gotta like there's no push that I can reasonably foresee other than some extreme circumstance that we can't do that. Uh, obviously the extreme circumstance is that if they didn't get this push out within the next couple of minutes, China could take over EU. They could take over all of EU's uh, information, steal it all, right? Like, you know, I'm sure there does exist some like, you know. Some you better get the shit out and go as fast as possible situation, but I just don't think that that was it. Apparently, they uh, had a way of pretty reliably automatically fixing this without manual intervention, but you have to opt in. Nice, nice. They're just rolling out some intentional errors. They're just they're. Uh, wait, wait, wait a second. What you're trying to tell me is they had uh they had a, they had chaos monkey testing. Do you think they have chaos monkey testing? And so it's upselling. Yeah, if they used NeoVim, this would have never happened. NeoVim and Rust. Would have never happened. Yeah, doing a rush job. See, exactly. That's why I just don't, I don't think it's any of these things. In my personal opinion, there was some small change and local testing of small change looked really good. And there was a rush to get it out due to some massive thing they discovered that needed to be fixed. And so they rushed out this change. 
and they said bypass checks because this is too important. It seems to work. We're probably good. It's very, very small. Not a big deal. Like it's just a hot fix. It's just a Friday. It's just it's about to be a Friday. Nobody's gonna care. And so they get it out. I mean, I just assume it's something as small as that. And of course, that is a failure of culture, right? A culture says that you can do this because it's probably not a big deal. But, you know, if you're Twitter, maybe it's less big of a deal, right? Because if someone can't tweet for five minutes, it's not a big deal. But if somebody can't, you know, start up their 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 server, it's a big deal. It's kind of a big deal. Chaos monkey testing on kernel files. What could go wrong? Yeah. Yeah. The question is, why isn't this uh, kernel code as resilient as possible? The channel file should not have been loaded in the first place. Well, I assume the channel file should have been loaded. It's what describes all the, the attack vectors of various channel things. I'm sure it makes perfect sense. Writing good C resilient code is extremely difficult. And anybody that tries to sell you that you should be able to write perfectly safe C code and you believe it, I have a bridge in Brooklyn that I would like to talk to you about. Windows kernel code is a mess. Many ex-MS devs uh, have sl- uh, stated it. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk. Like, this is why this is why God invented Zig. Is it, it just erases an entire classification of bugs that just can't happen for this exact reason. I cannot believe how bad CrowdStrike was. Dubai Airport, 7,000 people affects, uh, affected. Estimated damages not known. Fixed, no. Lax Airport, still not fixed. All Spain airports, still not fixed. Uh, Amsterdam airport, still not fixed. Damages, Microsoft Office, government edition. <laughs> 1,000 people, customer facing, no. Uh, Israel Central Bank, down. 102,000 people affected, nice. Another one, 72,000 people affected. More airports, more affected. More airports, more affected. Delta, well, Delta, I mean, Delta, Delta's not as bad as United, so I'm sorry, Delta. 300,000 people affected. Customer facing, Alas airport, Providence, let's go. More airport, more airport. Starbucks Mobile, damn. Starbucks Mobile down. Brazilian Bank, SLC Airport, 911 in certain states, damn. That's crazy. 911, that is nuts that you could get affected at 911. That has to result in a lawsuit.